The following presentation is an excerpt from a learning presentation given in November 2017. Hi, I'm Kevin Cassidy. Thanks for joining me today. And today we are going to take a look at the basics of Audacity. So keep in mind that this presentation is based on single track dry mono audio for doing narration and other types of scripting for e-learning. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The topics we're going to cover today will be setting up your preferences in Audacity, post-processing effects and how to keep it simple, editing your audio and exporting files. Finally, we'll give you some resources on where you can go to get some more help and information on Audacity. Okay, so the first area that we're going to take a look at is setting up your preferences. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can go to the dialog box that you see here, and we'll show you how that's done. Or you can also go to the top menu and set most of these um, critical settings for setting up your preferences right from the interface itself, from the dropdown. So let's go ahead now and take a look at how that's done. Okay, so here we are in Audacity, and um, let's go over how you set yourself up to start recording. There are a couple of ways to do it. The first way is you come to Audacity and choose Preferences, and then you get your Preferences dialog box. Now, the first thing that we are going to want to do is go under Devices, and this will stay as Core Audio for your host. Under device for playback, now this is your playback device, so this actually is how you hear what you're recording after you're done. In my case, I have the Scarlett 2i2 USB audio interface. If you are only using your, um, let's say your laptop, you would select built-in output, and that would be your selection for your laptop. But my speakers that I have here that I'm monitoring run through my um, 2i2 interface, so I'm going to choose Scarlett 2i2. Now for your recording, this is where you would see your microphone. In, the, in this case, it's the same thing. My microphone is actually plugged in through the Scarlett, and then the Scarlett, the USB, is plugged into my computer. In your case, you would see um, your microphone here. So if you have a Yeti or a Blue, whatever microphone USB it is, it, it, you'd see it right here, and you would select that. For channels, as I was saying earlier, you want to be doing single mono. There's really no need to do stereo. We're not doing any particular mixing or surround sound for um, narration. So single track, single channel mono is just fine. Okay, the next one down is playback. You really don't need to change anything here. Leave the playbacks as they are. Recording, I would also advise the same thing. Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to show you, my apology, is when you come to Devices, if you look up in the top here, your core audio, your uh, microphone, your playback, all of that is also found up here. So all the things that we just went over together, you can also choose them right here from the top. So now let's jump back down to recording. You can go ahead and leave this, every uh, all the default settings just as they are. That's fine. MIDI devices skip. Quality. Now, this is um, important. If you are going to be using this with Articulate and uh, putting it into WellCare University for uh, e-learning, you really want to choose your sample rate of 44.1 and your default sample format at 16-bit. That's plenty enough to be heard well. And if you choose anything higher than 44.16, what you're doing is you're just creating a bigger file. And the bigger the file, the more chances you're going to have for somebody on a really slow system to potentially have a playback issue. So I would highly recommend that if you're going to be using Articulate and putting this in as an um, integrated e-learning course, I would always go to 44 and 16. For sample rate converter, you'd want to choose best quality slowest, dithering sample rate, best quality, slowest. You can leave this just as you see it here. These settings are fine. And then guys, for the rest of it, you really don't need to touch any of this stuff. All this information here, just go ahead and leave it as it is and hit OK. Now, the last thing I want to show you about your setup is right here, you see this little microphone icon 
and then you see your monitoring, it'll say click to start monitoring. Please do that. Now watch when I click. Now I can actually see my microphone. And that's what I want it to be. So what I'm looking for is somewhere between negative 6 and negative 12. I've got mine set just a little bit higher because I, the microphone I'm using is not overly sensitive. I would highly recommend that if you're working with somebody who doesn't do a lot of voiceover work, as I said earlier, make sure you're bumping right around negative 12 here, negative 9 to negative 12. That's going to help to keep things safe for you. That way you're not going to get clipped audio and you don't have to worry about audio that's too low. If you're way down here around 21, 24, that's too low. That's going to get you that really bad audio that we talked about. And so if you don't see the right range, you want to come up here. And you can see how when, I, uh, when I put my cursor over it, see how my recording volume, volume says unavailable, use system mixer? That's because Audacity realizes that I have the 2i2 Scarlet plugged in and that I actually adjust mine through the system mixer. But in your case, if you're just plugging in a microphone directly into your laptop, you can use this slider to slide up and down, and that's going to set your recording volume to the right level so that you're getting right where you need it between minus 6 and minus 12. Okay, guys, so that's about it. That's setting up preferences, and uh, let's go on to the next topic. Okay, now I want to show you some examples of both bad and good audio because I want you to be able to visually see in the waveform whether or not your audio is in good shape or there's issues with it before you even get started. So this here is an example of bad audio. The gain is way too low. You can see in the waveform that it's very, very tiny. The, the waveform has almost no um, resonance to it whatsoever. This is audio that was set too low. The problem here is you need to raise up the volume of it in post-production to get it to be listenable. But what happens is when you raise up all of the bad, excuse me, when you raise the good audio, you're also raising up all of the bad audio as well in the, in the background noises. So this is not how you want to go. To fix this, it's very simple. You just want to go ahead and bring up your slider right here where you see the microphone, now, you would do that if your audio source is plugged directly into your computer. If, however, you are using a um, like a little audio interface box, you would want to turn up the gain on your interface box because that's going to override this little microphone slider that you see here. But the important thing is, as we just talked about in preferences, you really want to get your gain set properly before you get started. That's going to help you a lot. Okay, so for this example, this is an example of clipped audio. So clipping means it's actually gone above zero. Clipping means that the, uh, the, the peak or the spike of the loudest part of your audio is gone too high, and you're going to get an electric hum. It's going to sound terrible. You're going to hear a buzz in the background. This is what they call clipped. Now, the problem with clipping is you can't reduce the volume and get good audio back from it. Once your audio has been clipped, there's no bringing it back. So this is why we want to record between minus 6 to minus 12. I would recommend that if you are a less experienced voice actor or somebody who's not used to doing voiceover, go ahead and shoot for that negative 12 um, or somewhere between 6 and 12. The more experience you get, you can begin to record a little bit higher uh, once you learn to modulate your voice a little bit better you can get up towards recording at the minus 3 to minus 6 range, but generally minus 12 is a very safe place to be. So this audio is not going to work. Okay, here's an example of audio that's been overcompressed. Basically, compression is when you take the highest points of your audio and the lowest points, and you digitally smash them together. You bring the high points down, you bring the low up to give you a solid, consistent sound. Well, the problem with this is when you overcompress and then you normalize it up to a certain level, you can see here, this is going to sound awful. There's going to be no uh, elevation in the voice. There's going to be no low points, no high points, no emphasis. This is just going to sound loud. It's going to be like a constant buzzing noise behind their the person's voice. So this is overcompressed audio. We'll talk about compression a little bit more in one of the advanced classes, but 
this is not what you want to see for your audio when you're done post-producing it. Okay, this is an example of good audio. This audio looks great. Um, you can see here that there are spikes that are high, others that are small, uh, smaller and lower. That tells me that this has what's called good dynamic range. You want to see peaks and valleys in your audio where some of it's high, some of it's low. That's what gives it its natural sound. That's what tells you that it sounds like a human voice. There are variances, there's emphasis. So the good thing about this audio is um, it's going to be clean. It's pretty much ready to go. It could be a tiny bit louder, but it looks overall very, very good. Um, this is what you want to have. I, I just want to point out to you here that in this particular audio, you can see above zero here, this is your treble. And below zero here, this is your bass. So when you listen to this audio, this may favor bass a little bit, but overall, the height of the of the spikes above and the height of the spikes below are pretty equal. And that tells me that this is going to sound very good. So that's a nice piece of audio. Now we're going to take a look at post-processing effects. And when you're doing audio for e-learning, for audiobooks, or um, essentially narration, you don't want to do a lot of post-processing. The most important thing is that you get it right when you set it up. You don't want to be doing a whole lot of equalization to it. So let me show you quickly some easy things. We're going to go over the effects menu inside of Audacity. We're going to take a look at the noise removal tool that helps you to remove background noise. We're going to use room tone to clean your audio. So we'll show you how to use some of the uh, room silence to clean up your audio without taking any audio away. We're going to show you how to normalize your audio, which is basically loudness. When you use normalization, if you've recorded at a good level, normalization doesn't need to make up a lot of loudness. You shouldn't need to. You should be recording at a good level. So we'll show you that. And then we're going to show you amplify plus and minus. You can you can actually amplify or deamplify little pieces. So if you have a spike, like a little transient spike where it got too loud, rather than over compress it like I just showed you, I'm going to show you how to use amplify to highlight and deamplify or amplify uh, a little piece of your audio. And then the last thing is bass and treble. This isn't a bad little thing to use inside of uh, Audacity if you don't want to get into full equalization and you don't don't have the confidence of a of a complete sound engineer where you want to look at a whole equalization uh, uh, board or pattern and if that intimidates you you can improve the bass and the treble response of your uh, user or your narrator's voice by going to bass and treble it'll do some cool stuff okay so let's go take a look at this now live and go over some of these tools okay guys so now we're going to take a look at post-processing effects in um, inside of audacity now, what I want you to understand is we're doing this for single track dry audio narration. So when you go under effects in Audacity, my goodness, you are going to see everything under the sun. Most of this is going to be for musicians and people that are trying to color their music and different instruments. You really don't want this for dry audio. So let me show you the ones that are going to be key to you. The first ones I want to show you are, we have a little sample here of some audio. Looks okay, but right here we have a little cough. So we got a cough, maybe a sneeze, maybe a transient. And here we have a little background noise. You can see these little pieces in between. So let me show you some tricks for putting some simple effects on your audio. Now in another version uh, of this course, I'm gonna have an intermediate course where I'm gonna show you how to, to put together effects chains where you can link these all together. But for today, let's just look at it uh, piece by piece. First thing is I want to go to is the noise removal tool. Now, what you need to understand about the noise removal tool is this will remove all noise across the entire audio track. This is not going to be what you want to do for working on one little piece. So the first thing we want to do is select some noise. So right here, that's your noise. That's going to be background sounds, um, maybe a fan, maybe a, an AC vent. That, that's the type of thing that's going to cause your audio to have that background hum. So let's select that. Go to Effect and go to Noise Reduction and choose Get Noise Profile. Once we've chosen that, we want to go to Command or Control A, depending on what system you're on, and select All. Then come to, back to Effect, Noise Reduction. 
and you want to use these settings right about here. I've got 16. You don't want to go much higher than that. Sensitivity, I have it too, and that'll just about do it for you. Click OK and watch what happens. Boom. Did you see that? All of that background noise is taken out. Now you have this nice, clean, clean line. So that's how you use the noise removal tool to remove some background noise across your entire thing. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put that back now. And I'm going to show you another way. This is called room tone. Now room tone is when you record just a little piece at the end of whatever the environment is. And they do this in, in film. They do this in audio production. So this is really room tone, guys, right around here. So room tone is just some simple room noise. And a good way to remove something is if you take a piece of room tone and you copy it with a control C or command, you can come right over here and hit command V and boom, there goes that coughing sound that, that our recording person made and it's now gone. And not only is it gone, but it sounds exactly like everything beside it. So it's not going to leave some weird sounding artifact behind because it's the room tone. So that is a cool little thing. I'm just going to go ahead and put that back now, but that's a good way to help get rid of some problem audio if you just need a little piece removed. Now, the next thing I want to show you is normalization. Normalization means bringing up the loudness so that we have a normalized uh, loudness. So for this, you would want to go to uh, Select All, Effect, go to Normalize, and the industry standard is anywhere between minus one and minus three. Some people say minus three. I like to normalize to minus one. But the deal is, guys, if you have recorded this at a good level, remember what we said earlier, you should not have to normalize something that's really tiny. So when I click OK, you shouldn't see a whole lot of movement here. That's because we've already recorded it at the right level. So I'll hit OK, minus one. OK, so it gave us a little bump, and that's what we wanted. So the highest peak now probably this guy right here, minus one, and that's fine. So that looks good. So that's normalization. If you have recorded right in the first place, you don't need to normalize a whole lot. So let's go ahead and set that back. Um, the other thing I want to show you is Amplify. This is a cool little thing to take transients out. So Amplify lets you actually uh, amplify gain, make it louder, or make it softer. So if you had, let's say, one little piece where the person recording for you is speaking really loudly, and let's say the spike was even higher, well, let's say we wanted to just bring this one back into, uh, into line, for example. We could take and highlight just that area, come to Effect, Amplify, and now if we turn this down by about 6, maybe 7 dB, watch what it does. Bang. See, it brings it right back into line with the rest. So if you've got somebody who is not used to speaking publicly and they've kind of gone up and down in some of their audio, but you don't want to change the entire thing, you just have a couple of areas where they were kind of weak, too soft, too loud, you might be able to use Amplify to do some surgical um, touching of your audio. This way you're not affecting the entire thing. So that's a cool little thing. I hope you can uh, find some uses for that, but you can actually go up or down with it. So let me put back what I had here. And now the last thing I want to talk to you about is bass and treble. Everybody's voice, guys, is a little bit different. So you see the zero line here like we talked about earlier? Everything below zero is your bass. Everything above is treble. So you could see that this one's a little bit bassy because I'm actually using a microphone that has a lot of bass quality to it. Um, so when I do my effect stack, my effect stack usually gives me some additional treble. So I'm going to show you the quick way to do that. You're going to select all, and then you're going to go to bass and treble. And here we go. So on this one, I'm going to increase the treble by maybe about 10 dB. I could also decrease the bass a little bit, but for this, I'm just going to increase the treble. Now watch what happens to our waveform. If I hit apply... It's going to actually balance it out a little bit, but then what I would need to do is I would need to come in and do normalize, go up to negative one, and now you've got something that's got some more treble. So now we've increased the treble, so you can see above the zero line, 
has now come up significantly. Below the base now is not as prominent. There's not as much as mu as many um, uh, lines and spikes below the zero line. So that's about it, guys. I just wanted to show you those couple of things that you can go in there and work with your tone, work with cleaning up some stuff. So now let's uh, jump back into our next topic. Okay, the next thing we want to take a look at is actually editing your audio. And under editing, we're going to look at the Fit Projects button, which is going to let you fit your entire project in your window. We're going to show Zoom in and out, which is very critical. We're going to go over the Silence Audio button, which preserves your timing versus cutting or deleting. Uh, you'll add silence, and that will preserve your timing. We'll show you how to trim your audio to preserve only the part that you select. Uh, the Sync Lock Clock, it's a feature that's really not needed for single track voice. I just wanted to point that out. Copy and pasting, um, same as Control c and Control v You can certainly copy and paste inside of Audacity just like you would do any uh, word processing tool, which is great. And then we'll look at the Cut button, which uh, Cut is going to sew your audio back together exactly where the cut is made. So now let's go ahead and jump into Audacity and take a look at these features. Okay, let's now go over some of the very basics of editing your audio. So we've got some sample audio here, and the first thing I want to do is let's take a look at the ways that you can view your audio timeline uh, to get ready to work with it. So if you come up to the very top here, we're going to be talking about this bar right here, basically all the things that are contained up here to help you edit. On the far right is going to be a very useful one, Fit Project to Window. By clicking this button, you'll see that the entire project file comes into the window, which is really great. If you go to the very next button over, what that's going to do is that's going to take, and let me zoom in a little bit, or excuse me, let me zoom out. Uh, the, next very, the very next button here is Fit Selection to Window. So that means that if I just wanted to analyze this little bit of audio, this section here, because I needed to do some work on a part of it, but I couldn't see it well, just click on that, and that's going to bring just that selection to the window which is very, very helpful when you want to be doing stuff that might be like little precise types of edits. And then, of course, next to that is your zoom in and zoom out. And what that does is that, of course, zooms in and out on the entire file. So you can't zoom in or out on a specific area. This is going to be zooming in and out on the entire file. And these let you um, dive in a little bit deeper and closer. So that's those. The next ones over are going to be ones that you're probably used to from word processing or something similar. This is going to be undo and redo, basically a uh, control Z type of uh, feature. And the next one over is, this one is silence the selection. So essentially, if I just wanted to, let's say, silence this piece here, I could highlight it and then silence it. But I want to warn you that silencing does exactly that. It leaves you with no sound at all. It's dead quiet. So the problem with that sometimes is if you have room tone and then suddenly it goes to dead quiet, that's why sometimes I like to do the copy and paste of the room tone because you still get a natural sounding selection when you delete it. When you put this in, it's going to sound like it's going from some background tone to dead quiet and that's, that's going to sound strange in your audio. So I would be a little bit careful about using silencing. The very next one over is going to be trim outside of the selection. So basically, it's the inverse. So if I just want to take that selection, but I don't want anything else, click on trim, and it'll get rid of everything else. The next two over are copy and paste. Very self-explanatory. They work exactly like your word processing would be copying and pasting just like that. Pretty simple. You can move anything anywhere you need it. And then the final one that I want to show you here is the cut tool. Now when you use this cut tool, as you see it, the scissors, it's going to cut, but it is going to sew back together the rest of the audio. So if you want to leave this piece out, but you don't want to affect your timing, that's when I would suggest you go to the silence audio because that can drop that out there and give you your space back. But here's what I would do. If you're going to use silence audio, I would come over here 
and I would copy a piece of room tone and then paste that room tone back in. So you, there are just little techniques like that that you have to think about in how your final product is going to sound. Um, but those are some of the basic techniques of working with cutting, copying, and pasting and viewing your uh, audio. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our course and go on to the very next topic. And I believe that's going to be exporting. Okay, so the last thing we want to take a look at now is when you've done all of your post-processing, you've done your setup, you've done your recording. Now let's look at how to export the files. The important thing with Audacity is you want to save project as and keep an editable copy of your Audacity file or your AUP file. This is critical. If you just go ahead and export it, but you don't save your AUP file, you're going to have a compressed final file, waveform, MP3, but you won't be able to edit it. So what we want to do is we want to export to wave for the best quality. MP3 will give you smaller file sizes, but um, you're going to give up a little bit of quality. And then um, there's also an export multiple, and I'm going to show you a link on my Design for Training site that shows you how to export multiple files when you want to break it up over an e-learning course uh, over multiple slides. Okay, guys, so what we have here is the very last topic in our um, Lunch and Learn today, and this is going to be how to save and export. Um, pretty simple, but pretty important as well. So here's our Audacity file. When we make our final edits in Audacity, to save an editable file, you go to site, uh, File, Save Project As, and you'll get this nice little warning that Save Project is for an Audacity project, not an audio file. And that is true. So when you click OK, you're actually giving it a .aup name, and that's really important and then you can put it wherever you want. But you need to keep this .aup file alongside your exported audio file. It's not an audio file, it's a project file. So very important that you keep that if you ever want to come back and make any changes to um, things that you've done in here. Otherwise you're going to lose all of your editable materials. The other way is when you want to export, you go to File Export. And now you can go to export as MP3, wave, or multiple. Um, export multiple, I've got a really good little video on how to do that. I'll link it in the description here of this video. So look in the YouTube description and you'll have a link to my video on exporting multiple um, and how that can help you. I would suggest that for most projects you do, you're going to want to export wave because it retains the most quality. So exporting as WAVE will give you the same type of dialog box. And you can choose uh, different formats, 32-bit, 16-bit. Um, as again, I, as I said earlier in this training, I would do a 16-bit. It's going to give you a little bit smaller file. You will have the WAVE quality, but there's no need to go beyond 16-bit. And that's basically it. So those are, the, um, those are the basics. You want to make sure you save your project file and then do your export and keep them all together. I appreciate you joining me. Um, I just want to let you guys know that if you need some additional resources, please feel free to go to my website, www.designfortraining.com. Go under the audio label and look up Audacity. And that's where you'll find a lot of different videos uh, to help you with using Audacity. I want to thank you very much for joining me and I uh, hope you were able to join me in the next Lunch and Learn session and we'll be going over there some intermediate and a few advanced tricks and tips for using Audacity. Thanks a lot. This is Kevin, and as always, we'll see you next time.